हेलो नमस्कार अ वेरी वॉर्म गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल वेलकम यू ऑल टू आर एन सी आर टी इंटरेक्टिव सेशन एंड टूडे वी हैव ब्रॉट अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक फॉर क्लास नाइन्थ आई एम शिवानी झा एंड यू आर वॉचिंग अस ऑन ई विद्या क्लास नंबर नाइन एंड नाउ इफ आई टॉक अबाउट दी टॉपिक द टॉपिक फॉर टूडे इज काठमांडू विच इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक सो स्टूडेंट्स If I ask you, do you know about Kathmandu? Then obviously you will say it's a capital of Nepal. So now in today's session we are going to learn this chapter, and for that we have also joined by our expert. But before moving further, let me give you a very small piece of information that uh, if you have any query or doubt related to this session, then you can directly contact us. You can contact us on double eight double zero double four zero double five nine. Also, you can mail us your query on tth dot class nine at the rate ciet dot nic dot in. So, without move uh, before moving further, let me uh, tell you that we have joined by expert and he is uh, Dr. Amit Ranjan, uh, who is assistant professor ciet in CIT New Delhi. So, very warm welcome, sir. Namaskar. In today's uh, session. धन्यवाद सो नाउ आर फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम सर इज सर वट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न इन दिस चैप्टर एंड वाई इट इज रीनेम एज काठमांडू सो कुड यू प्लीज टेल आर स्टूडेंट श्योर दिस इज एन एक्सट्रैक्ट फ्रॉम अ बुक कॉल्ड द हेवन लेक बाई विक्रम सेठ हुज रिनाउंड ऑथर फ्रॉम इंडिया एंड दिस इज अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल ट्रेवल ऑल विच ही रोड सेवन ईयर्स आफ्टर ही हेड मेड दिस ट्रिप and it was not an ordinary trip he traveled from china to tibet to nepal by road so he hitchhiked took lorries took lifts to reach nepal and um, uh, eventually uh, on his way back to india in delhi so what we have here is a small extract um, from when he was in nepal in kathmandu on his way back from um, china and we get a very beautiful glimpse um, into kathmandu as well as into vikram seth's um, writing and um, also for students to learn how to write how to write a travel log how to write a memoir and so on okay so now sir my next question is could you please uh, tell us the whole story about this kathmandu sure it's not a story it's a memoir it's a hmm. um, travel log it's um, from the memory of um, the narrator of his travels in all these places and um, i must recommend this book it's a slim volume um, one must read it um, and that's the point of putting small extracts um, in our textbook so that students are inspired to um, read the whole book and read more like it so all right let's have a peek in first into vikram seth he was born in 1952 and studied at oxford and stanford he also studied in china and which is where this travel log begins um, he was learning music in china and traveled all the way back from china to india by road he is known for his poetry a lot of children's poetry as well um, novels a suitable boy is a very famous novel and memoirs one of which is um, the heaven lake and also non fiction um, called two lives which he wrote about his uh, uncle and aunt uh, set in the second world war fortunately i had the um, um, fortune of interviewing vikram seth for that uh, book and we also became friends his childhood name was also amit um this notable works are the golden gate from heaven lake a suitable boy which i have already mentioned and he explores themes of love loss family cultural identity that's just a brief um but his compass is much wider all right so um this extract that we have first the narrator goes to pashupati nar temple which is um sort of major pilgrimage for the hindus from across the world it's one of the most revered temples um and uh, uh, he was very surprised to see a board saying only hindus allowed uh, which in this day and age sounds um, um funny because um in democracies everybody is allowed everywhere but we also do have temples in india where only hindus are allowed so there's traditionalists um, uh, who still do not allow outsiders um so he describes the temple um which he describes as febrile confusion so the word febrile is related to fevers feverish confusion where there's a lot of commotion on the road lot of action like you're agitated in a fever so um there lots of people 
Um, and I will quote from the book here, priests, hawkers, devotees, tourists, cows, monkeys, pigeons and dogs roam through the grounds, which is pretty much the story of all big temples um, in India, is not right. it? You will find all these kind of major activity happening outside temples. And um, then while um, uh, Vikram Seth was there, then the princes from the royal family came and suddenly everything fell into order, people gave her way and they stood by the side. And um, so, he is um, in a way, you know, commenting on how people idealize um, royalty, even though now it is it's a democracy, people still have a cultural memory of uh, uh, kings and queens and somewhere at the back of their mind there is something. So, these are very small observations that he makes, but there is a larger point to all of these. And he also sees the foreigners who are very excited, who have um, journeyed from Europe or America. Uh, trying to enter the temple and they are draped in um, orange clothes, but they are still denied entry because their skin color is different and the priests stop them. Um, and then he talks about monkeys frolicking around as we have also seen in lots of temples in India, especially Hanuman temples, there are lots of monkeys around that. Um, so, he presents a very vivid scene of the temple, of the, um, the busyness of the place, um, the hustle and the bustle. Then he contrasts Pashupatina temple with um, <coughs> um, a stupa later on, but first these monkeys run down to the Bhagmati river, which is a holy river which uh, the Nepali people worship. Um, and it is a very poignant uh, moment where there is cremation happening on one bank and on the other bank there are children playing and there are women washing clothes, washer women. So, um, life carries on um, despite um, death despite the tragedy that you are seeing in front of you and this is um, the human condition. So, what I am trying to say is Vikram Seth very um, succinctly brings out these images from day to day life, which other people ignore. It is a writer who is very sensitive to the ironies, to the contrast, to the juxtapositions. Juxtaposition is when you place two opposite kind of things together. So, there is death and there is life, children playing, there is a lot of life, monkeys frolicking around on the other end there is this cremation happening. Um, and people also making offerings into the river, because it is a holy river, so floating flowers or other things. And um, he points out to a shrine um, on the bank of this river, it is a half protruding shrine. So, the idol, the murti has not come up fully, it is half submerged inside the ground and half above the ground. And it is said that this is the signal of the onset of Kaliyug. We hear a lot that Kaliyug yes, is coming, hmm. um, the uh, end is near of the world. So, uh, this shrine represents that when that when the shrine will come out of the earth fully, that is when the Kaliyug will finally appear. So, that is the description of Pashupatina temple, then there is Bhagmati river and then he contrasts again, juxtaposes Pashupatina temple with Bodhnath stupa. And it is notable over here that um, Nepal, um, that area, the Terai is the cradle of um, Buddhism, it is on Bihar Nepal border that um, uh, Gautam Buddha was born and later he attained Nirvana in Gaya. But this region is um, has lots of Buddhist devotees and so there are stupas from very ancient times and what we see here is an aerial view of um, the stupa. So, unlike the Pashupatina temple, this has a very serene calm atmosphere, there is no hustle and bustle, um, no priest shouting aloud asking you to pay offerings or anything like that. This is a place to meditate and in the same city a few kilometers away and um, the stupa is circled by a road. Outside the road is the city and inside the road is stupa, you can see in the picture that the stupa is circled by a narrow road. And just outside the stupa is uh, shops of Tibetan migrants selling trinkets and felt bags etcetera. So, um, for students this is a very good uh, informative bit from history and which and therefore, we do some interdisciplinary learning over here is that uh, the Chinese exiled the Tibetans, there was a war in the 1960s. And so, the Tibetans, um, I do not have a map of China um, here right now, it is in the north of China. And then the Tibetan refugees um, fought 
um, against the Chinese troops and gradually they entered Nepal. From Nepal they entered India and they sought refuge in India in Dharamshala in Himachal which is a major centre now, Dharamshala and McLaudganj and also there is a Tibetan refugee colony in um, Delhi. So, it was um, bitter resistance, but they were nothing in front of the might of um, the Chinese state power. So, there are lots of migrants in both Nepal and India and outside this stupa all these refugees have set up um, uh, shops for various um, trinkets and bags. All right. So, he describes these three holy places, the Pashupatina temple, the river, um, the stupa and then he goes on to describe the city. It is a very beautiful um, description Shivani. Yes. So, I um, will read out the description um, and which will also show us the prowess of the writer. Kathmandu is a vivid mercenary religious with small shrines to flower adorned deities along the narrowest and the busiest streets with fruit sellers, flute sellers, hawkers of postcards, shops selling western cosmetics, film rolls and chocolate or copper utensils and Nepalese antiques. Film songs blare out from the radios, car horns sound, bicycle bells ring, stray cows look questioningly at motorcycles, vendors shout out their wares. It is such a beautiful poetic description. You can see um, the way he says fruit sellers, flute sellers, hawkers of postcards and so on. You can see the poet in um, Vikram Seth and this brings uh, the words, bring um, the whole image alive. This is any bazaar in India, in any yeah. city. Mm -hmm cows staring at motorcycles and film rolls and chocolates and antique stores and all that kind of thing. So, um, this gives us a very vivid clear picture of um, uh, what Kathmandu is like and Kathmandu is very much like in um, Indian city in the hills. And on the street um, then he indulges, the writer in, indulges in some street food, he has um, corn on cob which means basically uh, corn which you have on the streets here as well, makai um, and marzipan which is a sweet made out of um, groundnut. Um, and then he thinks about he is getting homesick, so he wants to uh, come back to India. So, he wonders whether he should take a bus, a train and then a bus to Patna and from there take a boat to Prayagraj, Allahabad and from there maybe take another train to Delhi. So, he wonders about these things and this is the way he has been coming from China as well, short trips. Um, but eventually, he feels um, too homesick and goes and just buys a flight ticket from Kathmandu to um, Delhi. Um, but before that, um, there is a vivid description of a flute seller who also talks to a fruit seller and um, um, in any bazaar in India, you would know um, especially in a tourist place that there would be a fruit seller and there would be a flute seller yeah. uh, also playing the flute and people passing by, you know, if you go to Shimla or Masuri, you will see a flute seller um, playing the flute, playing his Basuri, people just passing by and incidentally somebody would buy it, but it is not that he is anxious about selling his flutes, he, um, he is just happy playing uh, the music on his Basuri. So, that is what Vikram said points out that he seems integral to the whole scene, that without him, without the background music, without the ambient music, the scene of the bazaar is not complete. And then he goes on to make some very profound statements about music, because uh, Vikram Seth was also very deeply interested in uh, music. So, he says that flute is um, the most universal and the most particular of sounds. So, um, and this is a contrast again, like we have seen various contrasts throughout the chapter between Pashupatinath and Bodhnath, the hustle and the quietness, um, cremation and the children playing. Similarly, here he says that flute is the most universal, wherever you go in the world, whether it is um, America or Europe, on the streets, wherever there is a market, there would be a flute se um, seller and uh, playing his flute or a hustler. Um, and at the same time, it is a very particular sound, it is unique, it is different from all other instruments and all flutes also differ from each other in different parts of the world. But it is one of the most ancient um, uh, music instruments and with different fingering techniques uh, in different parts of the world, but it is as if it is the soul of a civilization. 
um, you know, as if people is the expression of uh, people's sorrow, their joys, the flow of life. Like sir, we have seen uh, different types of instruments played by people like in the Shera Mela in our India too. Absolutely. So we can see. Uh, Absolutely, that's yes. what I'm saying. That in hmm. a bazaar, it's incomplete without a music yes, instrument, yes, yes. especially the flute. Hmm. So I'll quote from the chapter because okay. it's such a beautiful description, and this section is called the Ubik. Ubiquitous flute, the ubiquitous means something which is present everywhere, omnipresent. Um, there is no culture that does not have its flute, the reed ne, the recorder, the Japanese shakuhachi, the deep basuri of Hindustani classical music, um, Pandit Hari Prasad Chaurasia was a major exponent, the clear or breathy flutes of South America, the high pitched Chinese flutes, each has its specific fingering and compass. It weaves its own associations, yet to hear any flute is, it seems to me, to be drawn into the commonality of all mankind, to be moved by music closest in its phrases and sentences to the human voice. Its motive force too is living breath. It too needs pause and breathe before it can go on. So you can see it's such a, a lucid and beautiful description. Let's break it down a little. So first he goes on to describe the various kinds of flutes that are played across the world. He gives some um, example from Japan, from India, from South America, from to China. And uh, each one of them is unique, different kinds of fingering, different kinds of length of the instrument. Um, some are played from the side, some are played um, directly. And um, yet to hear any flute is to be drawn into the commonality of all mankind. So he's saying like there are things that we all have common across the world like harvest festivals. Like for example in India on 14 January everybody has a festival. In the east it's Sakrat, in the north it's Lodi, mm. it's Pongal in the south. They are all the same, so they are ha the harvest fest festival. Right. Similarly flute is common to all of mankind. Like it's the soul. Uh, to be moved by music closest in its phrases and sentences to the human voice. So you speak from the mouth and the flute also speaks from the mouth. There is no other um, instrument that is so close to the human voice. Um, and like human beings need breath and pause in breath, the flute also follows that pattern. So it's flute is like the life force of the world is saying. So very philosophical argument that Vikram Seth has made over here which um, we probably need to ponder more about. Okay. Um, so, we have a few minutes left. These are questions for um, discussion. We can discuss a few and leave the rest for your contemplation. How does Vikram say it portray the contrasting atmospheres of Pashupati Nath and Bodhnath? We have seen that in great detail, the hustle and bustle and the calmness of the stupa. What is the significance of febrile confusion at Pashupati Nath? Febrile confusion um, as uh, we discussed is feverish commotion, lots of activity happening which shows that a temple is a major center because so many people come over there, it is a major center for commercial activity as well as religious um, activity. What does the presence of westerners signify at the temple? What do you think? Uh, sir, according to me, uh, like uh, you have told uh, uh, and read about that uh, the Britishers like uh, whose color is white are not uh, uh, allowed to enter the stupas or temple. Yeah. So, I can say, I can guess ki that will uh, work. So, um, also the, the, mm -hmm. the significance is that um, there is fascination worldwide for um, um, the temples and the architecture of the temples and mm. gods and religion, there is a lot of interest amongst other people in the world, amongst in the west also. Um, how does the author describe the bustling and vibrant nature of um, Kathmandu? So, this we have seen, there was like a long the streets, passage. The streets to river, yeah, we can say. Absolutely and he is described with right. all the dogs and monkeys and the fruit seller, fruit seller and so on and so forth. What does author's decision to return home reveal about his character? A that he is a wanderer because he wants to go by road and by river and so on and so forth and B that he is also a nostalgic homesick poet kind of a person, he wants to get back home after all this. Two questions I will leave 
for your own contemplation what is the significance of the flute seller and music in the story we just discussed in great detail so i'm not going into it how does the author connect the flute music to the universality of human experience this also we just saw at the end very quickly uh, there are difficult words over here interesting words to learn and which you must learn how to use in um, sentences and um, in your writing a felt bag is a bag made of felt which is a fabric made by pressing wool or other fibers together febrile we have seen we have reiterated several times during this uh, show is excitement or agitation the origin of the word by the way is the same as fever haven now haven is not heaven Let's look at the spelling h a v e n not h e a v e n which is heaven and haven is a place of safety or refuge and if i um, if you remember the origin uh, remembering the etymology the origins is the best way to remember the difference haven is from half h a f f which is german for ocean so a sheltered place on the ocean is haven whereas heaven swarg that we know is also from german but it's hibin the um, land of gods so the home of gods marzipan we've already discussed is a confection is a sweet mithai made of almond paste and sugar mercenary is um, same related to the word merchant they have the same root so anybody who is um, driven by a desire for profit for money is mercenary off handed is casual or informal so if uh, we are talking off handedly it's a casual conversation that we having not a formal one right now we having a formal conversation through an institutional framework Brazier is a portable metal container used for hold, holding fire or charcoal. Kathmandu is a very cold place, so we need the sigri, as it's known in um, uh, Kashmir and different things in different places. Cold places have this to carry um, coal. Per se is a Latin phrase now incorporated in English, which means in itself, intrinsically. Um, this travelogue per se is interesting. is interesting in itself. nauseating is something which uh, causes feeling of sickness or disgust or a uh, feeling that you are going to vomit so uh, revise these words use them in your sentences and think about the questions um, that we just discussed i think we've run out of time have we okay yes sir and sir also let me ask you a question like uh, we have discussed that how beautiful the kathmandu is so uh, should our students also need to go there and see the beautiful uh, how beautiful the kathmandu is absolutely not just kathmandu one should travel as much as possible in life the more you see the more people you meet the more our horizons our mind broadens um, the better we become the kind of we become so we must travel and of course but must travel to kathmandu it's a beautiful place Okay so students this is all about today's session and i hope you uh, learned a very a lot of things from this chapter and now it's time to thank our guest our expert so uh, thank you so much thank sir you so much. for joining us thank you for and now me. also thank uh, to our all the viewers and students who joined us uh, in today's session so let me tell you a small information that uh, after this session you will watch our next session within a few minutes and that is uh, uh you can watch 3 to 3 3:30 pm class 10th uh, subject mathematics and the topic will be area related to circles part 1 and then you will watch 3:30 pm to 4 pm it's so for class 10th and the subject is economics and the topic will be sectors of the economy and then you will watch 2:30 pm to 4 pm and it's a parichacha session and then uh, as like uh, um, every day you can watch our sahyog session and its time is 5 pm to 5:30 pm and the topic will be vocational assistance and counseling in schools and lastly 5:30 to 6:15 pm you can watch our uh, next episode and that is leading student learning through storytelling in a rural school in telangana so this is all about today's session and i have to uh, tell you all the details of our uh, session which you can join and uh, also you can uh, follow us on our official youtube channel that is ncert official and plus also you can watch us on our social media platforms that is youtube facebook instagram and x so that's it for today's session thank you namaskar